And to baseball, Nationals Bryce Harper and the Cubs Chris Bryant, both from Vegas, played each other growing up. They joined us earlier on the show and talked about everything from their growing up to the stars they've become. You used to call him Silk because he was so smooth with everything he did. And, uh, you know, he played short, played, uh, you know, was a pitcher, hit well, of course. And uh, he was always good, you know. So being able to play with him, play against him in high school, um, you know, I wish we could have played together in high school. But, uh, you know, we played uh, opposing, on opposing teams. But, uh, you know, being able to watch him play uh, now is, uh, at this kind of level, is a lot of fun. And, you know, I root for him every night. So it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Someone reminded me of that yesterday. I completely forgot they used to call me that, but um, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, I used to do a lot of things, you know, just kind of nonchalant. He was know. good. <laughs> <laughs> he used to do a lot of things good, so he's fine. <laughs> I'll say it for him. You know, he said he got a bad rap for that when he was younger, but he, he you know, played so well, played so hard, and uh, but he did everything so smooth. So you know, he does this little thing. If you see him tonight. He like smiles like I don't know how to explain it. It's like a weird <laughs> smile, but like a like a uh, like kind of thing. But like a uh, I don't know if he knows if he's doing it or not. It's it's weird. I don't know what it, I don't even know. I mean, it's he's been doing it forever since we were younger. Um, <laughs> but I mean, maybe I'm the only one that realized that. Chris, one thing that you would steal that Bryce has done pretty well. Uh, he he has some pretty good hair. Uh, <laughs> it's always like he has something new up there. Uh, that's pretty good. I mean, he does everything well. He's he's on a tear right now. It's been fun to watch. Yeah, he's doing a lot of things well right now. The Special Olympics Flame of Hope began its cross-country trip from three locations, Maine, Florida, and Washington, D.C. today. Over the next month and a half, the torches will travel through all 50 states, culminating at the opening ceremony on July 25th in L.A. That's going to do it for us. We'll see you tomorrow. And we welcome you to Chicago from the north side. It's the Cubs playing host to the Washington Nationals here at Wrigley Field. It's Major League Baseball on ESPN presented by USAA. And what has turned out to be a very nice night after some rain showers. We get ready to go check the standings in the National League. The Washington Nationals, they are red hot. They've won 20 of their last 25 in first place in the East right now. The Cubs, meanwhile, four and a half out in that Central Division trying to track down the St. Louis Cardinals. Hi, everybody. Welcome into the broadcast booth. John Chomby, along with Rick Sutcliffe, a former Cub. And, well, we got lots to get to. We have a bevy of quality position players that we're going to check out. But first things first, words I have really been waiting to say. America is long to hear. Stay put. Stay quiet. We'll get to you in just one second. We start in the outfield. Bryce Harper has played as well as anyone in Major League Baseball this year. So we start in the outfield with the third member of our team, Doug Glanville, whether it's defense or offense, Harper has been the story in the Major Leagues. John, you have to start with Bryce Harper. It has been absolute domination the month of May where he's really put out his calling card of destroying Major League pitchers. And look at the game we're talking about in May. 11 home runs in the month. And guess what? There's five days left in May. It's ridiculous. 26 RBIs, driving in runs, driving in himself, and a combined OPS of 1, 4, 2, 3, 14, 23, which leads to a 500 on base percentage. So he is doing it all. He's playing fantastic defense, the number one rated in terms of defensive run saves over Jason Hayward. And he laid down a bun against the shift. So right now he is doing it all and showcasing all his talents. And as well, you got to remember, Bryce Harper, just 22 years old. Meanwhile, on the other side, a guy who was a former teammate in Little League, Bryce Harper's Chris Bryant. He's gotten so much attention. But the guy, I think you could argue, is the best player on their team, Anthony Rizzo. But it's not just the on-the-field stuff that you focus on. Can I go now? You, go ahead. Okay, fine, now. Yeah. I got to talk about Jason Baratek. I think he's the most significant player in the history of the Red Sox. You go back to 2004, he not only ran that pitching staff, he ran the clubhouse, and he ran Alex Rodriguez into the ground one time. He said, you know what, we're not being pushed around by the Yankees anymore. On July 10th, for the Chicago Cubs, that exact same thing happened. Anthony Rizzo got mad that Nate Sherholz was getting buzzed. He went over to the bench with Chapman, and he says, I challenge the whole team. I know we're not a good team, but I'm tired of being pushed around. I'm not saying that they're the best players in the history of the franchise, but I'm saying that Anthony Rizzo, as Jason Veritek did, has a chance to change the course of this franchise here in Chicago. Since the start of last year, he's got the third best OPS in the majors. Meanwhile, this guy, Chris Bryant, he is starting to heat up. Look at that. Last 14 games, 
five home runs. He'll hit second here tonight as the Cubs play host to Bryce Harper and the Washington Nationals. We'll have the first pitch for you coming up at 7.20 Eastern time at Wrigley Field. Time now to send it back to the studio and Adnan Ver. Boog, Sut, Doug, thank you very much. Alongside Dallas Braden. I was actually off yesterday, but my phone blowing up with text about how Dallas scuffs up baseball, so maybe we'll bring that back at some point today. The focus right now, though, is all about Matt Harvey, and the issue is, Dallas, the fact he was suffering from a dead arm. That's what his manager, Terry Collins, thought. Threw a bullpen session today, though, and Harvey says he felt fine. Can, can I go now? Yeah, you can go now. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, one thing you think about when it comes to dead arm is, you know, it, it's a feeling like you're pitching underwater. You just can't get it going. The party starter being the shoulder, as I refer to it, just sort of lags, sort of drags, and you don't feel like you can get the party started. You definitely can't finish the party out front. So it, it, there's no pain or what they call acute pain. There's not a, You can't point to it. Just the overall feeling of being submerged and not being able to move. And clearly, Harvey's not subscribing to that theory. This is what his manager, Terry Collins, is hypothesizing. And so Collins is suggesting this. How about a six-man rotation? Fairly young rotation, with the exception of Bartolo Colon. What do you think about that idea? Uh, I'm down on it initially, and it's only because being the creature of habit that I was and knowing what types of creatures of habit these pitchers are, it's not. It's going to fall on deaf ears because they've been trained and they've trained their bodies for so long to answer the bell every fifth day. The workload that goes on in between is something that they've prepared themselves to handle, not only mentally but physically. So when you factor in an extra day off, there's guys who, when you have a day off, they go to the field and throw because they just can't miss a day. There's guys who absolutely love to take that day off and just rest and relax and kind of, you know, decompress. So for me, it's something that has to be instituted early on at the lower levels. So when you train these guys in A-ball to pitch on every sixth day of rest, they're getting to the big leagues and they know what's coming. But if you're going to work them every five days through A-ball, double-A, triple-A, and then they get to the show and they've got an extra day of rest or an extra day of work, however you're going to look at it, mm -hmm. you're really throwing them, no pun intended, a huge curveball. We shall see what happens with that Mets team. Clearly has been faltering the last couple of weeks after a great start to the season. One guy who has been consistent in the rotation is Jacob DeGrom, the reigning rookie of the year. Right now, Dallas, he's chasing a Mets record in terms of consecutive outs. What do you most like about him? Well, I, I love I, <laughs> I love his hair. We'll start very jealous. <laughs> That's the, one for sure. Very jealous of the hairline. But in all seriousness, its ability to command the zone. He doesn't walk many people. He forces the action with the fastball. His secondary stuff is second to none, in my opinion, on that staff. Obviously, we know about the Dark Knight, but this guy is the one, for me, that's been overshadowed by the Dark Knight. This guy, like you said, Adnan, Rookie of the Year, his attack and his presence on the mound is something, for me, that shows beyond his years. Going way back, and you see names like Rick Reed, Tom Seaver, and not so far back with Bobby Parnell as DeGrom will be chasing history. When we come back, you'll see the first pitch of DeGrom and the Mets as we'll be waiting out that rain delay and get you more action with John Shambi, Doug Glanville, Rick Sutcliffe momentarily. Stick with us. During the rain delay, I uh, try to keep sane, man. I'm honestly the worst guy during rain delays. I don't know what to do. We play chess. We occasionally play poker. Sleep. <laughs> I'm always trying to find where the food's at. They always seem to hide it from us. There'll be some sort of maybe feats of strength that the bullpen catchers have to go through. I'd love to be able to the tarp slide guy, but I think there's a little too much injury risk there. Some of those get real long, and you're just, you know, you're stuck just tooling your thumb sometimes. <laughs> Every auto insurance policy has a number. But not every insurance company understands the life behind it. Those who have served our nation have earned the very best service in return. USAA. We know what it means to serve. Get an auto insurance quote and see why 92% of our members plan to stay for life. Mom, Dad, um, where do chicken fries come from? Mm. Well, when... Well, son, sometimes there you have to There comes a time you find a chicken... Sometimes you have to the defense. Uh -huh. Just never double dribble. Michael. There's just no stopping true love. Chicken fries are back at Burger King. 1800 Did you know that DirecTV has 99% signal reliability? But don't just take my word for it. Take it straight from my horse's mouth. 
You were expecting a horse, but you got a goat, and no one wants a goat. Direct TV don't give you goats, they give you reliable service. Hannah, I think we just nailed this ad. Get rid of cable and upgrade to Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. If you're looking for a car that drives you and takes the wheel right from your very hands, this isn't that car. The first and only car with direct adaptive steering. The 328 horsepower Q50 from Infinity. Adnan Burke alongside Dallas Braden. We're in our baseball tonight studios waiting for the first pitch in Chicago. It's right now they're waiting out the rain delay, but we are hoping to have first pitch just under 11 minutes from now. So Nationals and Cubbies will be coming up momentarily. But in the meantime, we'll give you some other baseball action as the New York Mets are in action against the Philadelphia Phillies. And Jacob deGrom, in case you missed it off the top, has been fantastic. 23 straight guys that he has retired. Clearly, Dallas, this is a Mets team right now that is struggling a little bit, though. What needs to change for the Mets? Well, they need to get that offense going. You know, they've got uh, <laughs> they've got some guys in that lineup that can really get it started. Obviously, you look for a guy like Ligueras to get things going. But, I mean, they got a, you know, they got a pitch. They're going to lean on DeGrom, obviously. He's their go-to guy right now with Harvey out. So that's what's got to happen. Pitching is going to win these games. Keep them close. Give that offense a chance to get itself going. And clearly, we're looking at the Nationals right now. That's a team the Mets have to be chasing. And with this Washington team, you kind of have this sense that, okay, they're going to have a, you know, a bit of a quiet start to the season. They were missing Anthony Rendon, and clearly a lot of expectations upon them. But now it seems like the Nationals have got their act together, and good luck trying to catch them in that division. Well, they're starting to click. Everything is sort of falling into place all at once at the right time. You know what, Scherzer's obviously taking off and has established himself uh, to what we knew he was going to be in that in that rotation it's an exciting time in washington and you'll see the nationals and the cubs coming up around 10 minutes from now though it's time for first pitch from the new york mets phillies and mets jacob de grom on the hill enjoy it and we're trying and oh there's granderson i knew he was somewhere and paul Wecky's behind the plate he's just gonna have to get faster 24 start for Pawecki <laughs> behind the plate. And the tenth for DeGrom, who's ahead on Rivero in two. Boy, he is throwing hard tonight. Those Jeep numbers, you know them, folks. Five and four on the year, but ten and four and sixteen starts here at City Field in his young career. Allowed just one hit, the only base runner he allowed in eight innings in his last start against the Cardinals. That hit came in the first inning off the bat of Matt Carpenter. And after that, DeGrom not only got the right hand hitters out, but more importantly, the left hand hitters, because that had been the uh, concern for Jacob earlier in the year is that he was struggling against the lefties. But they're now under 300 against him this year. He's a little up with his fastball right now, even though Revere is, is flailing at it. You know, he's up, Keith, but he's throwing 97 miles an hour. You know, you don't usually see him that high, or I don't. I got to think that uh, up and in fastball. They tried to come in that time, didn't get it there. He's going to tie him up and bounce something on Revere 0 2. That away. Revere 1 for 5 yesterday, hitting 260 for the year. Freddie Galvis and Chase Utley to follow. Phillies had been doing better. They had won eight games in an 11 game stretch, but now they've dropped their last two. And it pops them inside with a slider, 2 and 2. Really, Ronnie, the last start for DeGrom was the best I've ever seen him throw. Mm. That's Had saying really something. Really wicked brick and stuff. Well, arguably, it was one of the most dominant games in Mets history. Only three other times have the Mets ever had a game pitched where a pitcher went at least eight innings and allowed only one base runner. Tom Seaver did it once. John Neese did it once. And Matt Harvey did it two years ago against the White Sox. Mm. It was an historically splendid outing. And Revere lines one at the left center, and he's got himself an opening hit. Finally got a ball down in the strike zone. Revere, a typical left-hand hitter, likes the ball down. So the batter retired streak ends for DeGrom, where it started tonight at 23. There's the Hyundai starting lineup. Same exact lineup for Ryan Sandberg as he ran out there last night, with the exception of the pitcher. That was a heck of an at bat by Revere. It sure by was. Way. It was. No question. Well, that leaves Rick Reed safe in the record books. Reed has the Mets record of 28 consecutive batters retired. Set that in 1998. 
I didn't get to see Rick Reed pitch, but a lot of you guys say he was like Maddox light. Uh, that's exactly what um, Todd Pratt, his catcher, called him. Called him Maddox. Poor man's Greg Maddox. There you go. That's the term he used. Freddie Galvis, two for four last night, and he takes low and inside. Rick Reed threw a lot like uh, Andy for our team, uh, Rick Anderson. Oh, okay. he threw a lot like him, but better, much better, okay. much a little more velocity, a lot more velocity, but the same kind of stuff, Ron. At that same two seam fastball, the Cologne throws inside against the lefty. He's got a lot of strikeouts that way. Runner goes, hit and run, deflected right to Flores, and he turns it over for the double play. DeGrom got a piece of it, and it was perfectly directed to Flores for the 1 6 3. Well, hit and run right here. Ball up the middle, deflected. I don't know if someone would have got to this on in time. Let's see. All right, that's a base hit, first and third. So very fortunate that DeGrom got the glove on the on the ball. I found it very interesting. After Galvez slid in here, kind of spiked Flores and kind of asked him if he was all right. Well, uh, Revere, sorry. Revere with the slide, spikes him. That's part of the game. Mm. Got him running the ankle, but see, he reaches for him like, are you all right? You don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. Tied of the game. Ty Cobb wouldn't have said, uh, excuse me. <laughs> right. What happens, he slides through the bag, so his foot goes over, catches him right, right. on the shin, ankle. Chase Utley, two for three yesterday, and the ground falls behind at 2-0. Utley's on the rise. Last time the Mets and Phillies played, Utley at one point slid below 100, up to 183. Now you see where he got spiked there, where Flores did on that left ankle and shin. 3 0 now to Utley. It left a mark. It ripped the sock a little bit. Yeah, that happens. A little different strike zone you'll see from home plate umpire Ron Culpa tonight. Here's a strike. Well, early in the game yesterday, Larry Vanover yeah. could have called a strike on a pitch two feet outside. Bartolo almost tipped his cap a couple times. <laughs> he had a large strike zone. Oh, yeah. oh, boy. Changed a little bit as the day went along. Certainly, Justin Freitas didn't see it that way. <laughs> he couldn't throw anything close to the strike zone. He threw a three-run shot up there, a little three-one hanging slide piece to Flores. You know what? He's a good pitcher. He's been a big part of this Phillies team. He just was not his day yesterday. Mm -hmm. Grounds work back from 3 and 0 to 3 and 2. And Utley lines one over short, and that's a base hit. So the second hit in this opening inning for the Phillies, and Utley continues his revival. Well, interesting. Two base hits today, similar pitches, similar line drives over the shortstop's head. Good hitters taking the ball the other way. I think now they know DeGrom is something special that you have to go up there and really, really just be compact and go with the pitch. Here's Ryan Howard. One for three yesterday, had a sacrifice fly, and it was hit deep and a mile high. And Howard said after the game that he thought he got it. He thought it was going to be a grand slam, but it came up about 10 feet shy of the wall. And he yanks that one foul. I was going to say, one of the things that has changed in Ryan Howard, and it happens to a lot of older hitters, especially power hitters. They start to get very aggressive on that first pitch, first at bat, because they think they're going to get a fastball. He did, but he was too quick. And mm. curveball swung and missed, nothing in two. But getting a good down tilt, Ronnie, on a yeah. breaking ball. Yes, he is. Plowecki's got some painted fingernails, doesn't he? You can see those from the moon. Forget about 60 feet, six inches. Mm. Three on yellow. Read tarot cards with those. <laughs> Howard pulls one into the shift. Campbell from the right side throws it out. Eric Campbell overlapped to the right side about 50 feet into the outfield. That, folks, is a 5 3 put out. <laughs> Gotta change the way they score those things. I think so. So, unfortunately for Jacob DeGrom, the consecutive batter streak is over, but we are minutes away from first pitch to the Nationals and Jordan Zimmerman. As they take on the Chicago Cubs, first pitch minutes away. Stay with us. Is this the year you take the scenic routes? 
and save on the gear you need during the summer kickoff sale at Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Check out Sun Tracker, America's favorite pontoon boats, now with the best factory warranty in the pontoon business. Hi, can you open the razor case, please? Photo ID. I'm just grabbing some razors. Grabbing? It's almost like they don't want you to buy their razors. DollarShaveClub.com delivers amazing razors for just a few bucks. From the opening serve, only one place delivers the most courtside thrills. The French Open experience from DirecTV. Watch up to six matches at once, all on one channel, with bonus early round coverage and exclusive interactive stats, all in crystal clear HD. Cable and Dish don't deliver a grand slam like this. The French Open experience begins May 24th, starting on channel 701 from DirecTV. Bryant hits a high fly ball, deep left center. It's got a chance. Gone! Chris Bryant with his first big league home run. Marvin Huston has tossed Bryce Harper for getting out of the batter's box. Bryant puts one in the air. That's his first home run at Wrigley. Long gone. Swing and a long drive. Deep right field. Way back. Upper deck. Another battle shot for Bryce Harper. Well, the kids from Las Vegas in the house, Bryce Harper, Chris Bryant, as we have the Nationals taking on the Chicago Cubs here at Wrigley Field. Exciting stuff. Two of the best young players in the game. And let's check out the starting lineups for your Washington Nationals. Matt Williams, the skipper of the Washington Nationals, and he's had an easier type time putting his lineup together. They're first in the league in runs per game. Top of the order has been a big story. Denard Span started the season on the disabled list. He's been killing it. A home run yesterday in the win over the Cubs. And then the guy that hits cleanup, he's been doing just that. Number one in the majors in pretty much every category and been exercising a much more patient approach here in 2015 than we saw last season. Meanwhile, that lineup, Rick Sutcliffe will go up against this right-hander, Kyle Hendricks, who's coming off a really good out. He really is, 25 years of age. He's one and one on the year with an ERA of 4.14. This will be his ninth start of the season. Four of his no decisions, he's left the ball game as the winning pitcher, but it got away from the bullpen. He decided that last time out, as you said, he just, I'm just going to go ahead and go all nine innings, a complete game shutout in San Diego. That was last Thursday at Petco Park. Had a little bit of a delay because of the rain, and we're ready to roll here at Wrigley. Span climbs in. Yeah, the first offering of the game misses downstairs. That's normally where Hendricks will be, right? He's normally going to try and use that sinker. That's, that's a good sign. When he misses, he needs to miss down, as you just said. Well, this guy, Denard Span, had off-season surgery for an oblique issue, and then it bothered him again in spring training. Cuts and misses there. The thing about Span is fascinating in terms of the stats is that he is actually better when the pitcher is ahead. This season hitting 379 when the pitcher is ahead, which shows a lot of confidence and comfort in his approach at the plate. He knows he can be deep and still do damage. Chases after a changeup right there, and Hendricks off to a good start with a strikeout. There are a lot of things that you're going to see tonight from Kyle Hendricks that will remind you of a young Greg Maddox. The velocity is not there. Probably four miles an hour shy of where Greg was his first full year at the big league level. But the difference between the velocity of the fastball and the changeup is a lot of times eight to twelve miles an hour right where it was with the former Hall of Famer. Delivers a strike to Ian Desmond a shortstop his season off to a a bit of a rough start. You see the 13 doubles, but the guy you're anticipating will deliver a little more power than he has at least so far this year. And as well for Desmond, it's been a, a tough go on the defensive end. Just getting started here at Wrigley. We talk about Greg Maddox, those pitches you just saw, that fastball running back, that's the reminder. It starts off in that outer batter's box left-handed batter's box 
and comes back over the corner. And Dougie, as a right-handed hitter, is there anything you can really do about that or with that pitch? Well, you can foul it off, you know, and, <laughs> and hope he makes a mistake because it literally is in the other batter's box, and it's crossing the plate at the last minute, so not much you can do. Gets him to chase there so far, and not much the Nats and we've been able to do with Hendricks to away. You know, I think Greg Maddox was really the first guy that I ever saw overpower people with off speed pitches. I mean, it really was his changeup that was the swing and miss pitch. The fastball was always going to be located. If he hit it, it was normally going to be on the ground. But when he needed that strikeout, it was the changeup that he would throw. And he had the ability, as Kyle Hendricks does, to throw it away to right handed hitters. Two down, and here is Yunel Escobar. This is unbelievable here, Dougie. Yeah, I mean, this is. You see yeah. where Escobar's at in the box? And what you're going to start seeing, Nationals hitters, they're going to get frustrated <laughs> because he's going to start creeping an inch out, a little bit back and forth. And to his credit, he's going to keep expanding that zone. You know, and the other thing that becomes nasty is when you see the body language there of Escobar. The other thing is when he starts getting that little slider cutter that starts there and then goes away. Then he gets the chase. And that one got him. So he was right on top of the plate, and it ended up earning him a base. So Escobar on first, and with two outs, there he is. Bryce Harper will get a chance to come up to hit. Well, I guess there's been a, a reopening of sorts of the debate, the best player in the game. It's hard to argue who has played the best this season. This guy leading in homers, in runs, in walks, in OPS, second in pitches per plate appearance, number one in defensive runs saved in right field. He's done it all. I mean, he's emptied the notebook on the on big league pitchers this year. And let's not kid ourselves, guys, when you look at Major League Baseball from a broader scope, and he does it with some personality. <laughs> I mean, it's Pete Rose with power. That same kind of passion for baseball. I like that. But you know what? It's it's that time of the year, guy. I, I mean, it's the end of May. There are a lot of 22-year-olds out there that are graduating. <laughs> and, yeah. and and Dougie, that's the way I see it. He has graduated to be the player everybody predicted. Yeah, just like in college, his fourth year. Throw to first. Out at first. Got him. Escobar picked off. Great work by Montero as he was able to hide behind Harper and fire a throw down to first base. You know, tough play is what you know what's impressive about Montero here is he's throwing over Harper and it used to be totally taboo for a right handed throw to throw over a left handed batter. Yep, after a delay they're not going to review it Cubs are coming up to him. Six horsepower Lexus GS. Experience the next level of performance, and there's no going back. Lease the 2015 GS350F Sport with complimentary navigation system for these terms. See your Lexus dealer. Welcome to Jurassic World. It's like taking a stroll through the woods. 65 million years ago, she was designed to be bigger than the T Rex. Probably not a good idea. We have an asset out of containment. She's killing for sport. We have families here. They'd have been fine on any other day. Ready PG-13. What made you switch to Taco Bell breakfast? I, for me, I personally think that all the breakfast sandwiches are the same, but this is an AM crunch wrap. What really sets it off is I have a hash brown in here. I'm CJ. And I'm a breakfast defector. 
make the journey as extraordinary as the destination. The exquisitely designed Lexus ES and ES Hybrid. Unforgettable. Get 0.9% financing on the 2015 ES350. See your Lexus dealer. Joe Madden's team coming up to it in the bottom of the first. No score. As you know, Escobar picked off in the top of the first. Here's the Cubs lineup. They're seventh in the league in runs per game. Chris Bryant, well, 480 in his last eight home games, but the power numbers have really picked up over the course of the last 16. And then the, the guy who's been their best hitter since the start of last season, Anthony Rizzo, top five at NL in both on base and slugging and OPS. He's been magnificent, does a good job defensively as well. And that Cubs lineup goes up against Jordan Zimmerman. Yeah, Jordan struggled in the month of April. He has struggled in his career here at Wrigley Field, as you can see. And look at the opponent's batting average with runners in scoring position. He's not struggled in the month of May, though. Basic Dexter Fowler here. Cubs last year had trouble getting a lot of OBP out of the leadoff spot. Fowler has given him that at least so far this season. 344 is on base percentage for the Cubs. Leadoff spot last year is a smidge over three, about 303. So he's improved on. And with Zimmerman, you have to slow him down. That's your job. Just keep him out of that rhythm. Because he's going to work quick and try to rapid fire you and get you to chase so most important to really slow him down I was talking with Cubs president Theo Epstein yesterday during the game and he's really really been pleased with Dexter Fowler uh, the way he has played defense in center field you talked about the leadoff numbers that he's put up That is drilled right field. Harper back. Sunglasses on, turning and looking, and gone. A towering home run into those empty bleachers and right off the concrete back out onto the field. And Fowler with his six comes lead it. It's one nothing. Really a great at bat for a lot of reasons. One, he worked the pitch count. He eventually got a mistake. That fastball was supposed to be in, tailed back to the heart of the plate. Fowler, just a real simple, compact swing. And here at Wrigley Field, that's all it takes. Well, this guy's been delivering a lot of power lately, Chris Bryant. And an awkward swing there. They appealed the first, and Hunter Wendelstedt said he went. This one driven in the air center field span backpedaling back some more Dougie they'll be fighting the sun out there in the early going huh well they'll be fighting the sun and the wind here and it's hitter friendly night I think there's a you know must be a promotion or something but I'll tell you what every ball hit up in the air once it gets up it's, it's traveling and this is something they're gonna have to figure out what's going to happen with these scoreboards how's that going to impact the swirl in the outfield so to be determined but right now every ball hit up it's carrying so Zimmerman has to be that ground ball pitcher that we know for him to be successful there's a first pitch strike to Rizzo it's a good point with those brand new scoreboards in left center and down that right field line that's the type of stuff that affects the flight of the ball the wind patterns that type of thing And I'll be honest with you as a pitcher the wind would dictate what type of pitches I would use in that particular game if the wind was blowing in I stayed hard and I went with the hard slider but if the wind was blowing out I would throw a slower curveball knowing that that wind would make the ball break even more Rizzo rips that one into the right field corner that's a base hit Harper in there to dig it out and Rizzo's got his 13th double of the year. Well, this is the example of why Rizzo is so good. His two-strike approach, watch how he chokes up on the bat. Stays compact and just pulls the hands in. Choking up, you see the knob at the barrel, 
making it short and sweet. Gets the foot down, head position. He doesn't try to do too much. And this game, so he's not a guy you can put away easily. More walks than strikeouts this season. And that is the key to why he's so successful this season. So Rizzo into scoring position for Castro. And there's a strike to the shortstop. A three-time All-Star. 65 for the three home. We're certainly not your classic cleanup hitter. Well, guys, I think we all agree that at some point in the not too distant future, that Chris Bryant is the cleanup. It would be Castro that goes into that two hole, but they're trying to get him as many good pitches to hit as possible to get him off to a good start. And Rizzo will provide that protection. So the lineup right now is not exactly what Joe Madden perceives. Little tapper back to the mound. And Zimmerman handles. Down to third goes Rizzo. And Jordan Zimmerman, the 29 year old, making his 10th start of the year. And Zimmerman. I mean, a unique story, a Division Three baseball player who's had a ton of success at the big league level. Here at Wrigley Field in Chicago, and after the wet stuff, the rain delayed us just a tiny bit. Now the Cubs have jumped out one nothing at a homer by Dexter Fowler. You know, no question that Zimmerman's had trouble with lefties. You know, the splits are very favorable for left-handed hitters to be successful. So, and we've already seen it early on with Fowler and Rizzo getting the extra base hits. I was talking with Matt Williams before the game about that, and he said that it really had more to do with the cold weather the first month of the season. He said that Zimmerman could just just couldn't get a grip on that slider. It kept getting away from him. His velocity went down because his command was not there. He said all of that has changed though since the weather has warmed up. One of the challenges we're already seeing early on is he's he's living a little bit up in the zone. You know, and he's always when he's at his best, he's powering down, the ball sinking, it's heavy, he's staying on the corners, but a lot of mistakes have been sort of up by the letters. Missed up there. Yeah, ground balls and strikeouts when he's right for Jordan Zimmerman. I mentioned a second round pick in 2007 out of Wisconsin Stevens Point. And that's some great scouting right there. Believe it. Nice stop behind the plate by Ramos. You know one thing that goes unnoticed a lot with Anthony Rizzo is what a good base runner he is. You saw him kind of hesitate on that ground ball back to the pitcher but he hustled to get to third base in hopes of something like that happening to create another run. And a third two down and the three two. A little bit high and Montero will take his base so Zimmerman Having to work hard, he's thrown 20 pitches here in the first inning. Well, guys, as we like to in the first inning, we like to talk about the strike zone of the home plate umpire, Mike DeMuro. Behind home plate, this is his 15th season, and if anything, he's small. He's tight, he's consistent, but it's a small zone, and, and both of these guys, as far as the pitchers are concerned, are going to have to adapt to that. So Lair chasing there. Jorge Soler, the native of Cuba, again, one of their youngsters, just 23 years old. He's 23. Russell's 21. Bryant's 23. And he went. Well, we've seen a lot of that here in the first seven weeks of the season. He can handle anybody's fastball. You, you cannot throw it too hard. But the breaking stuff, it, it, We've seen him chase it. It's been a big problem thus far with all the strikeouts. Runner takes off, and they got Montero in a rundown. And now Rizzo, they're going to watch him throw to the plate. Tries to tap dance out of the way, but Ramos puts the tag on Rizzo. 
And the Cubs run into an out to end the inning. They do get the run on the Fowler homer. It'll be Bryce Harper to lead things off for the Nets when we come back. Lennox makes the most energy efficient system you can find, which means the appliance you use the most will also save you the most. Crispy chicken loaded with pickles. Pickles. You know who totally loved that? Peter. Peter Conrad? No, Piper from payroll. Pack a pack of papers, please. Pam, prepare the parallel path presentation of Patrick's perusal. Pickle people pick Wendy's new crispy dill chicken. Just a buck 49. They didn't join this team to win championships or become famous. They joined because there is important work to be done and only some able to do it. They are brighter, better educated, led and equipped than any team in history. They are doctors, lawyers, engineers, technologists and combat troops, all prepared for whatever comes their way. You'll find them where the lights don't flash, and the only contract they sign is with themselves and their country. One day, they may be asked what they did to make a difference in this world, and they can respond, I became a soldier. Just gonna lie down. Bang, Dave Hart. It's time to finish this. It's time to believe. Rockets, Warriors, tomorrow at 9 on ESPN. Welcome back to Wrigley Field. Let's get into Bryce Harper and why he's so dangerous. It's about plate coverage and discipline now. The curveball, he's not chasing, but he's able to hit it even down in the zone for power. The fastball away, he's taking it the other way a lot more than last year and doing damage, but now he can also hook it. So where do you play this guy? He can do damage on the same pitch to different parts of the field, almost impossible to defend. First pitch swinging here, it lifts it in the air. Left center field, and it's Fowler to pull that one down. So Harper swings early in the count. He's second in the majors in pitches for plate appearance, and that time got aggressive early. Well, I love how that half inning started right there. Great job, Dougie. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Well, Bryce Harper <laughs> makes it easy with all the things he's No, but my it. point being that less of Boog means more of us. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like that's when, when we're at our best. The first voice you hear. Rick Sutcliffe for Doug Lando. Uh -huh. Can I can I can I talk now? Ryan Zimmerman now. Zimmerman making that transition over to first base. You're gonna love the three P's with these two starting pitchers tonight. Pace, presence, and pitchability. It'll be a long day for the Nationals if he continues to paint that late runner that starts away and kind of bites the corner, especially if he has that slatter going with it. Up the middle, Russell, nice grab. Oh, he stole a hit from him. What a play by Addison Russell, not a second baseman by trade. He's a shortstop, but he's figured it out over there. Well, he wants some range and most importantly getting to that backhand and covering the middle. The metrics show he's had a really great debut in a position he wasn't familiar with. But you talk about getting in front, the quick step, he actually had even more time than it appeared. So you can imagine he could have gotten a runner who's even quicker than Zinnerman. So lightning quick transition makes the throw and Rizzo is a lock over there at first. The youngest of the bunch at 21 years old. He came over last year from the Oakland A's, a former first round pick by Oakland. I, I say he's the second best shortstop in baseball. I'm not going to put anybody above Simmons down there in Atlanta, but watching Addison Russell play shortstop this spring, I mean, it's almost like you should just.
do a video on him. We've got so many young players that, you know, Baez is in the mix and will be again. I mean, you know, where do you put all these pieces? And, you know, you just see that they have the depth now to really go deep into the season. Little dribbler to third. Bryant charging on the bare hand. Nice dig by Rizzo. Good job on each corner. Chris Bryant on the move, making a fine play. savings are still going on at Lowe's. So hurry in for these great savings, like $10 off all paint and primer and stain and sealant in one via online or mail-in rebate, plus five bags of premium mulch for $10. So hurry into Lowe's now for big summer savings. <laughs> Allergies can distract you. So when your symptoms start, Doctors recommend taking non-drowsy Claritin every day of your allergy season. With Claritin, you get powerful non-drowsy relief 24 hours a day, day after day. Which is important, because with fewer symptoms to distract you, you can focus on the extraordinary things you do every single day. Live Claritin clear every day. TLX from Acura. Visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. Only Dove Men Plus Care Antiperspirant has 48 hour sweat protection plus one quarter moisturizer technology. It keeps your underarms dry without irritation. Tough on sweat, not on skin. Did you know that DirecTV has 99% signal reliability? But don't just take my word for it. Take it straight from my horse's mouth. You were expecting a horse, but you got a goat, and no one wants a goat. Direct TV don't give you goats, they give you reliable service. Hannah, I think we just nailed this ad. Get rid of cable and upgrade to Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Major League Baseball on ESPN is presented by USAA, proudly serving the financial needs of current and former military members and their families. And in part by Papa John's, Greek pizza is back for only $12 at papajohns.com. And back here at Wrigley Field as we go to the home half of the second, John Jambi, Rick Sutcliffe, and Doug Glanville. And here is Jorge Soler, hits a rocket. Out there to second base, and Espinosa able to gather it in. Man, that was hit hard, but a ground out. Well, guys, let's go back to how the lat, the top of the uh, bottom of the first inning ended. Take a look at what happened here. That's designed. That was put on from the dugout. Now Rizzo, to me, makes a mistake here. You cannot let anybody throw the ball to home except Ryan Zimmerman at first base. We know he has shoulder problems. He has throwing problems. Plus, he would have been going in the opposite direction of where the throw was supposed to go. To me, Anthony Rizzo just reacted way too soon, and because of that, it was an easy out. First one to Coglin down and away. That was Joe Madden managing right there. He knew that Soler had no chance with another breaking ball. Let's try to steal a run. Uh, absolutely. You know, you think about it. 0-2 count on Soler, and he's throwing him two straight sliders. He's got to just keep going to the slider. And the chances of Soler laying off a four straight slider is going to be not likely. And Zimmerman keeps it out of the zone. So you know, why not free up the bat and give Soler a fresh count if it doesn't work out? Chris Coglin in a 1-2 hold. This guy who settled in as their every le everyday left fielder last year and played well. This season it's been uneven. Just 213 does have seven homers, but a, a former rookie of the year back in 2009 with the Marlins. This, by the way, 
we're the leadoff hitter in our doubleheader. We got two games coming your way on ESPN. Later on, it'll be the, the Dodgers and the Braves. And Clayton Kershaw getting the start. So more baseball coming your way. But first things first, we got the the Nats and the Cubs here. Yeah, out there it'll be Dave O'Brien, Aaron Boone, and Mark Mulder from Chavez Ravine. A swing and a miss. And two down. Now Clayton Kershaw, yeah. MVP and Cy Young Award winner a season ago. He's won the top pitcher in the league three different times. And he gets the call tonight against the Atlanta Braves. He's pitched fairly well this year. He's just he's gone up against Madison Bumgarner a couple of times and come up on the short end. This one to right field, Harper. And a quick and quiet one, two, three inning as Hendricks flies out to right. Cubs lead it one nothing. Is compromise. The Cadillac 2015 SRX. A crossover with space, safety, and style. Lease it from around $339 per month. Hey, big guy. I heard you lost a close one today. Look, Jamie. Maybe we weren't the lowest rate this time. But when you show people their progressive direct rate and our competitors' rates, you can't win them all. The important part is you help them save. Thanks, Flo. Let's go get you an ice cream cone, champ. The sprinkles? The sprinkles are for winners. I understand. Degrees for the philosophy, but the food just fits so much better with my philosophy. Put it on a pizza. The Greek pizza is back. A large for twelve dollars. Add our new garlic knots for just five dollars more. Better ingredients, better pizza. It's PapaJohns.com. Give a little time for the child within you. Don't be afraid to be young and free. Lock to the locks and throw away the keys and. Take it's not home, but with every well-considered detail, it becomes one step closer. Coming your way. That's right. You're gonna get in a groove. ESPN2 Sunday Night Baseball, and you got the Angels playing host to the Tigers. Again, that one Sunday at 8 Eastern ESPN2, and also available on ESPN Radio. Hendricks has looked sharp so far as he'll face more Espinosa and Zimmerman. I was talking with Matt Williams about his decision for Tyler Moore to start in left field and he said he's got a loopy swing and if he's going to have success it's going to be against a sinker ball type guy which Hendricks is. Michael Taylor yesterday made a play that basically won the ball game. The game was saved like in the fifth inning on a diving catch that the young outfielder made. Stuck the landing it was beautiful. And again, Moore is a guy who is a first baseman by trade, who has learned the outfield. He's gotten a chance to play. Remember, Worth was on the DL coming off of the shoulder issue in spring training, and now back on the DL with the wrist problem after getting hit by a pitch. And that's a serious thing, too, for Jason Worth with that left wrist. He's had several surgeries on it. He's got metal rods already in there. That started way back when in a spring training game when he was hit by A.J. Burnett. And I mean, it's scary stuff you mentioned. 
Talk about a guy who's blossomed in one of the leaders and one of their top offensive players when he's right. Moore takes the lead off walk back to the studio and we say hello to Adnan Burr. What's going on, Boog? Sut, Dougie? Let's give you an update right now on the Royals and Yankees alongside Dallas Braden's Mark Teixeira. Going deep. Text message, all aboard. Next stop, Pound Town. 2 0 the Yankees as Teixeira continues to slug it. He's got 14 home runs this season. Also, the Marlins and the Pirates, Neil Walker goes deep. Yeah, Neil Walker's taking him deep to left. Exit stage left. Neil Walker, a lot of pop. 4 0 box, Boog. Back to you. Got to try and get Dallas to get his personality to come out a little bit more. <laughs> Let's get him a little more comfortable. I love it. He's getting more and more comfortable, isn't he? If you have not had a chance to see the segment that they did on baseball tonight, last night, with Dallas explaining what these guys are doing to try and get a little extra grip on the baseball, it is magnificent. Well done by everybody. But it really, for as funny as it was, and with Dallas he's going to put that great but it, it was funny but informative here watch here this is actually what I'm doing it was it was great you can go on ESPN.com and check it out and uh, just great work by the folks in baseball tonight Dallas and company back in the studio Danny Espinosa here. Cubs lead it on a Dexter Fowler solo homer. This guy's an interesting story. We see some some players like Hendricks who have been able to dominate with that sinker but also get swings and misses. Well and I was talking to him yesterday and he said that's exactly what got away from him the first couple of starts of the season. The sinker was going from left to right. There was no downward movement to it. And he said you know what a lot of people were talking about mechanics. I finally said enough. I've been, I've been throwing this pitch my whole life. I know what I'm doing. I just need to relax. He found that comfort zone his last time out in San Diego and he's taking it to the mound with him again tonight. And I'm interested to see if he's going to add more later in terms of the inner part. He's not really going in on hitters a lot. And the, you talk about Greg Maddox. He had that backup slider to really keep you honest. Well, you know, Dougie tried to do that on the 0-2 count with Escobar, and he hit him. And I think that if, if I'm a right-handed hitter for the Nationals, I, I get right on top of home plate, as he did there, and tried to eliminate that part of the zone looking away. When you got a guy with great command like this, you, you, you got to give up something to get something. On it back to the mound. And Hendricks handles it. Well, Hendricks has something in common with one of my partners, and it's the fact that he's really, really, really smart. He oh, went to you. an Ivy League school. Oh. And, and look, here, here's a list of former Ivy League players that are currently in the majors. You got Baxter and Hendricks, Columbia Dartmouth. You got Three Princeton guys, two Yale guys. Doug Glanville went to Penn. No Penn guys on the list currently, uh, Doug. Yeah, what's going on, Penn? They had a good year there, though. So they had a really good year, so we're hopeful. But right. you, you know, the rivalry is Princeton, so we have to let it go. Once you graduate, you got to kind of move on and support each other because it's kind of a small group. Towards the hole. Nice play by Castro. And he throws in behind the runner. So more. Down there at third with two down and an infield hit to Nard Span. Yeah, this is big about if anything, worst case scenario, you knock it down, but it's a great job because obviously this is a clear run, not hit hard enough to really have a play for left field. So Castro sort of gets it and corrals it, and then he thinks about back door. If I go to third, see if the runner's sleeping. So nice play. You know, you wonder in our web gem culture, is that a web gem? Well, we usually think about recording outs, but that is a big play right there. What uh, what Ivy League were you thinking about going to? What about if your daughter went to Harvard? Yeah, don't sleep on something now. Fair enough. I mean, I was the <laughs> first round draft pick by the Dodgers. I, I was leaning towards an Ivy League school, believe me. Well, maybe not. You once were shagging near the Ivy here at Wrigley Field. That's about as close as I ever got. <laughs> Chris Bryant coming up to hit the Cubs already leading. It is one to nothing here in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. 
It is a weak man who urges compromise. The Cadillac 2015 SRX. A crossover with space, safety, and style. Lease it from around $339 per month. Hey, big guy. I heard you lost a close one today. Look, Jamie, maybe we weren't the lowest rate this time. But when you show people their progressive direct rate and our competitors' rates, you can't win them all. The important part is you help them save. Thanks, Flo. Let's go get you an ice cream cone, champ. The sprinkles? The sprinkles are for winners. I understand. Your dreams are realized. The Women's College World Series begins Thursday at noon on ESPN. You learn something new every day. When I was 15, I learned how to make pizzas from a real Italian. When I was 20, I learned how to make pizzas from a real Greek. At 53, I figured out how to put two countries into one pizza. The Greek pizza is back with basil pesto, black olives, pepperoni, feta cheese, and banana peppers. A large for $12. Add our new garlic knots with garlic parmesan seasoning for just $5 more. Better ingredients, better pizza. PapaJohns.com. Last of the third, Cubs up to hit as they lead it one to nothing. And a uh, game tonight that features a couple of guys who've known each other a long time. Bryce Harper, born October of 92. Chris Bryant, January of 1992. So about nine months separating the two of them. Harper, first overall pick in 2010. Chris Bryant out of the University of San Diego, second overall after Mark Appel in 2013 and then up to the big leagues at 19 years young for Harper in 2012 for Bryant he had to wait that little extra time eventually debuted on April 17th they started playing together when Bryant was nine Harper was eight as Russell hits one through the right side hole Addison Russell at the right page at 21 a single the other red way Guys, I want to explain Joe Madden's theory for why he hits the pitcher eighth. And he said in spring training, he likes to build the pot for the big boys. And when you're going to hit Chris Bryant in the second spot, you really don't want a pitcher down there making the first out of the inning. You want a guy that has a chance to get on base and build that pot up, which is what they're trying to do right here. Well, now a man aboard. And here's Fowler. Dexter a home run already. The only risk for that lineup structure is the first time around. Because that's when you're, you know, you're not building up for that three, four hitter. But you know, you get through that, you know, all of a sudden now you can see the logic because Brian hitting second, you want as many guys in front of him as possible. I think one of the other things how it's played itself out, fellas, in a statistical oddity, Cubs pitchers do not have a sacrifice bunt this year. So they really utilize that spot as a way not to give away free outs but more to, as Rick said to, to set up the rest of the order nine one two and three Tell you what guys one thing I learned from being around Joe Madden all of spring training not only does he have these ideals but he has data to back it up run it into your foul Ramos did that go in the, oh, I thought it went in the cup holder because you got to get extra points for that, don't you? Come get it on. Out of there, You're like a teddy bear at the carnival, don't you? Well, didn't somebody catch oh, one in a beer some here? Scissors or something. Oh, get aggressive. Oh, Let's yeah. go. Get some scissors, whatever it takes. And he doesn't get it? Ah, well, you know, it wasn't a strong enough effort. Gotta step it up. No, he's got the W on his hat. Fair enough. And Rick back to Joe Madden one of the things as well he's got the data but as a general idea he's open minded and I think that he lives in a way where he's open to having his mind change he's open to the idea I used to think this about how to execute strategy five years ago and now I think this well it needs to be that way when you're 
always responsible for young development, young player development. Because in Tampa, you know, guess what? The pitchers got to 29, 30 years old. They were gone. So he's had to live through developing young players and sort of helping them mature at a quicker pace. And once again, in Chicago, that's his job here. And so he has to kind of be open to the talents and the possibilities of young players. He told me in Tampa years ago, he said, it's managing this club's like being in high school. You know that every year the seniors are going to graduate, which means they're, they're all going to move on. We can't afford them down here. That's, that's just, that's the way we do business. That's he, not the way they're doing business here on the north side of Chicago anymore. He had actually never been to this park until last year when the Rays came and he got a chance to manage here, and he eats it up. I mean, he he loves being part of the history and the tradition of this organization. Bounce softly right side, Espinosa, and they get the out there. Well, prior to the game, pretty special interview as the the two youngsters got a chance to sit down with one another, childhood friends, Chris Bryant and Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper on Sports Center asked about the qualities that make Chris Bryant such a special player. He's an unbelievable player, you know, being able to uh, have the power that he does, especially at Wrigley Field, you know, having that basket out there, it's a lot of fun to fun to hit here, and, uh, you know, the fans should be happy, you know, being able to have a guy like this on their team, guy with power, a guy that can run, throw, everything, uh, do anything the team asks him. I mean, it's a lot of fun to watch him play. Something about that, seeing two guys before a regular season game sitting down in the dugout next to each other for an interview I feel like just it's unspoken that if they're going to do that the respect and how much fondness they have for each other and they're also pretty good <laughs> silk and Mondo what were their nicknames growing up Chris Bryant was silk and that's pretty obvious I mean how easy and smooth he goes about his business Mondo, I, I mean, even Chris Bryant couldn't remember where it came from. He thought it had something to do with being a catcher. Now both guys go about it offensively in similar ways. Doug, either to get a get the nerd on for a second, they're three true outcome guys. They both walk, strike out, hit homers, not strike out in an exorbitant amount, but they both will see a lot of pitches. And Bryant's seen the, the power really take off. Last 69 plate appearances, six homers. Right. You know, they make quick adjustments. I mean, look at, you know, Harper 22. Now he's taken this game already to another level. And a lot of it has to do with commanding the strike zone. And Bryant already has that knack for really picking his pitcher. It's one of the things I think now in 2015, Rick, we look at the walk as something that the hitter is participating in more than we did maybe 30 years ago it almost seemed like we always thought of it as something that was entirely up to the pitcher the walk and now maybe we assign a little more credit to the hitter for it yeah I agree work the walk last year Chris Branch started the season in double A and a guy that I have a lot of respect for Storm Davis was their pitching coach and I asked him about Chris Bryant as a hitter, and he said, Sut, it was unbelievable. They'd, they'd punch him out, strike him out his first at bat, pounding him in, say. And they would think, okay, we found a hole. But by the time he came up for the next at bat, he had that hole covered. It didn't matter if it was chasing a breaking ball or what. That's what we're seeing right now. We're, we're, he, he, he's starting to have better. Those are good breaking balls. But he's getting a piece of it. And I, my thought is right now, if Zimmerman makes a mistake with that breaking ball, this thing could go a long ways. He had a ball in spring training that we timed over six seconds before it came down. <laughs> you could like drive a 18 wheeler and get under it before it came down. <laughs> Pretty well hit center field, span back, back some more, and makes the grab just near the edge of the track. Uh, Russell moving up, two down. Well, Jordan Zimmerman's on top of his game. He's having an outstanding month. Take a look at this at bat here. Moves him off. Now the breaking ball. Okay, I found some. Come back in again. All of these are quality pitches. There's a breaking ball down. That's an outstanding breaking ball. Normally puts a lot of people away. And Chris Bryant will tell you, he just missed that. 
Look at the glove come back to the heart of the plate. It looks like he's smiling all the time, doesn't it? I guess when you've played the game of baseball as well as he had his whole career, it, it, it just, <laughs> it just, it's just there. When you play it that well, it's fun. Here's Rizzo now. Guys, you were talking earlier about how Escobar with Hendricks decided to move up on the plate. That's where Rizzo lives perpetually. He's right on top of the plate. Yeah, he shouldn't pitch to him either. <laughs> he really should not pitch to him. Well, I'll take my chances with Castro on deck. You know, Rizzo is just time and time again, and any count can be dangerous. And, you know, Rizzo has proven already that he's not the guy you want to mess with in the Cubs lineup. So far this year, Anthony Rizzo sees the fewest percentage of pitches in the strike zone in the majors. Number two is Bryce Harper. You wanted absolutely no part of him. That's smart. You know, take your chances with Castro and you know work your magic there. But Rizzo, tough out even with two strikes. Rick, what are you seeing so far overall from Zimmerman tonight in terms of how he's looked? Obviously, they're pitching around Rizzo, but what, what's your thought on how he's performed so far? I really think the best of bats have been by Chris Bryant. I mean, the two balls that he hit to center field went further than the home run by Dexter Fowler. Up the middle, Espinosa, pretty nice play. So Zimmerman gets some help from the defense right there. One nothing Cubs. Here comes Bryce Harper. Since you were a kid, it's been share this, share that, share the road, share your feelings. When does the sharing stop? How about with the grilled stuffed nacho from Taco Bell? The first nachos designed not to be shared, wrapped up and ready to go for a buck forty nine. Local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. Did you know that DirecTV rated higher than cable and customer satisfaction for the 14th year in a row? But don't just take my word for it. Take it straight from my horse's mouth. Yes, yes, she's right. Anyway, back to my story. So there I was in Tijuana, and this guy comes up to me and says, how would you like to be in showbiz? And that's how I met Dickie Wittenberger. <laughs> A horrible agent, but a beautiful man. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Our new app will revolutionize car service and repair. Excuse me? Yes. Uh, is that anything like uh, Cars.com's new feature called service and repair? No, because with ours, you'll know the cost of labor and parts in your area. Anywhere, like, anyone else? Like Cars.com? So you'll never pay more than you should. Like Cars.com. Excuse me one second. She's totally right. I messed up. I'm sorry. Cancel the IPO. Research, price, find. Now get the right service without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive. No drama. Major League Baseball on ESPN presented by USAA. And here at Wrigley Field, John Chomby, Rick Sutcliffe, and Doug Glanville. You know Escobar at the plate. Oh, look at that rainbow. Incredible. Oh, I, gotta... I thought you were talking about Steve Trout was back in the house. <laughs> Guess that was his nickname. That's beautiful. Yeah. A little bit of a delay because of the the rain to begin. And it's turned into a pleasant night. Well, here's Yunel Escobar with 
Bryce Harper lurking. Udell hit by a pitch and then picked off a first by Miguel Montero. Well, if Escobar is going to do anything, it's going to be right now. Because of the guy in the on deck circle, you do not want to give him a free pass. You got to make him swing the bat. So, Yunel Escobar will take his base, and here comes Bryce Harper. Well, how about this? Most homers in the team's first 45 games of the season, that's for players age 22 or younger. You got Killebrew and A Rod, 18 apiece. Harper is at 16, tied with Eddie Matthews. Regardless, Pretty amazing company right there. And Bryce with those 16 homers to lead the National League, leads it on base, leads in slugging, leads in walks. He's never homered here at Wrigley. Rocking the one batting glove look, you know. See that a ton. I think Hunter Pence does it with the, the Giants. The thing is that we were looking at the numbers, and there's one place where you seem to be able to get him, and he's hitting 139 on the inner third. So I'm wondering how tough it's going to be for Hendricks because he hasn't shown that he can go in at all. He's really staying away pretty much consistently. D Dougie, it's impossible, as you well know. Those fastballs on the inside part of the plate that are getting Harper out, they're, they're 94 miles an hour and above. And they're normally four seam fastballs, which are straight. Those are two things that Cal Hendricks can simply not do. What do you watch here in terms of the battle between Hendricks and Harper specifically this at bat? All that Harper saw in the first at bat were sinking fastballs away. And if he weren't, if it wasn't for Escobar being on base and a chance to give them the lead, that's all he would see here. But now you've got to break out something else, and that's going to be the changeup. This could end up being two, and it is. Let's look a little bit closer at Bryce Harper's string. One of the things that's working really well is his hand position. You talk about walking away from your hands, creating separation. And now the swing pass is where all the electricity happens. It's lightning quick through this zone. Watch how quick, even in slow motion, he gets to the ball. And everything is behind him. He's got his weight back. That's something Mike Napoli's been trying to adjust with, getting his hands back when his foot's down with that load. And that's where the power comes through. And with that lightning swing, boom. Yeah, Napoli has been in the middle of a power surge of late, was going over video from 2013 to get locked back in with that hand and load setting and it's starting to pay off for him. for Bryce Harper things are paying off big time here in 2015 0 for 2 tonight well, he has such great hands and I, you know I, I talked earlier about Chipper Jones who was a guy who kind of could almost step in the bucket as in step open a little bit when he strided on the first base side as a lefty, but still had a lot of power behind it. That's Harper. He has got such good hands and so quick, he can be a little bit off balance. Dougie, there was that pitch you were talking about. And, and it's a great pitch because as a hitter, once you get comfortable that you can eliminate the entire inner part of the zone. Then that backdoor fastball doesn't really have the effectiveness. People start leaning out and really starting to go the other way. He's got to keep that once in a while going in. And hitting Escobar really wasn't the worst thing. Good stop by Montero on a pitch down in the dirt. Hendricks, who was originally drafted by the Rangers, who told you out of Dartmouth 2011, came over to the Cubs July of 12 for Ryan Dempster. Bryant to his left, able to spear and steady. Zimmerman is out, and the inning is over. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth here from the friendly confines.
Our new app will revolutionize car service and repair. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, is that anything like uh, Cars.com's new feature called service and repair? No, because with ours, you'll know the cost of labor and parts in your area. Anywhere, like, anyone else? Like Cars.com? So you'll never pay more than you should. Like Cars.com. Excuse me one second. She's totally right. I messed up. I'm sorry. Cancel the IPO. Research. Price. Find. Now get the right service without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive. No drama. At Hilton, we say play hooky from the ordinary, the uninspired, the routine, but mostly just play. With Hilton's 12 brands, you always get the lowest price. Only when you book direct at Hilton.com. You learn something new every day. When I was 15, I learned how to make pizzas from a real Italian. When I was 20, I learned how to make pizzas from a real Greek. At 53, I figured out how to put two countries into one pizza. The Greek pizza is back with basil pesto, black olives, pepperoni, feta cheese, and banana peppers. A large for $12. Add our new garlic knots with garlic parmesan seasoning for just $5 more. Better ingredients, better pizza. PapaJohns.com. Transmission from Acura. Thank you, thank you. There you go. You're my favorite player, <laughs> Thanks, bud. There you go. My life is complete. Thank you. Yeah. Can I please have your autograph? Well, folks, it's time to vote for your All-Stars with the 2015 Insurance MLB All-Star Game ballot for the 2015 All-Star Game. You can vote at MLB.com slash vote. Catch all of the excitement of the 86th MLB All-Star Game on July 14th. What do we got going on there? Do you have to buy a ticket for the... Is it a puppet? Is that a person? Oh, there we go. Whoa, that is ripped in the right center. So a man aboard. All right, well, previously I'd mentioned it last night on Baseball Tonight. They did a really cool segment featuring Dallas Braden and how you get a little extra grip on the baseball. So we send it back to the studio. Dallas is going to join us now on our broadcast. I thought that was some real interesting stuff last night for the folks that didn't see it. Just a, a, an overview of what you were you were telling people last night. Sure, Boo. Well, like you alluded to, we're talking about how to get a grip on the baseball, cold weather, things of that nature. And if you take a look at the video here, we're going to show, I'll call it, kind of explain to you guys how I went about it here. We're going to zoom in, pay attention to the hands and the wrist here with my left hand. I will go to the right wrist. My back is turned to the opposing team's dugout to not tip them off on what I'm doing. And I'm lathering up, getting myself a little love there. And same thing here. Now watch the thumb here, highlighted right here you see the thumb what I've done there I've gone to my second stash that's right I've went and got some pine tar that way my next pitch I can go to and get that change up working and then that last bit you saw here after receiving the ball from the catcher what I would do glove under the arm and on that transition take the ball up my arm all in one motion and act like I'm rubbing it down well I'm not I've just loaded up so I can well you know get a better grip and finish my pitches out front something I needed with my 85 flat mile an hour baseball <laughs> not working too much I didn't have such stuff to go get guys out I had to figure a different way <laughs> <laughs> that is good stuff right there literally and figuratively <laughs> Doug is a player as a hitter I guess I, I should say more specifically did you ever notice stuff like that oh yeah I mean well you noticed pitchers always were fidgety you know touch the cap touch the back they, they always had something going on part of their routine and ritual and didn't always think about exactly what the agenda was but 
there's no doubt that you know you always were wondering and you suspected guys because the movement was so electric you know you're like well wow that's late movement he wondered but you know i talking to you know rick I learned a lot about sort of the necessity of grip, and, and certainly as a hitter at 95 miles an hour, I want them to have a grip, <laughs> for sure. What did you do? All of it, come clean. <laughs> Take a look in the on-deck circle, what's there. You know that I spent most of my career in the National League, okay? There were a lot of times when I would take batting practice, and like every other hitter, I would put pine tar on my hands. And there were a lot of times when I would forget to take it off. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Harper started back now in. And I always knew that if an umpire came out to check me, which I will tell you, in 18 years I never got checked, okay? The only reason I would have ever kept it on there was to have a better grip of the breaking ball and not hurt somebody with the fastball. But, you know, we take batting practice before every game and you've got to have pine tar in your hand. And occasionally I, I would forget to wipe it off. And the next thing you know, I'm, it's still there in the ninth inning. <laughs> but I always knew that if somebody came out and looked at my hand and there was pine tar on, I, you know, I, I'm sorry, I didn't have time to take it off after my last at bat. If, Mr. Umpire, you want me to go take it off, I will, but you cannot eject me for what I'm doing right now. Were you ever trying to change the flight of the ball, the path of the ball? No, never. It, 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 you know, the Good one question. thing is, it would, it would be a better breaking ball, okay, because you'd be able to grip it, but it wouldn't be any different than what it would be on a night like this. On a night like this, that rosin bag is all you need. When you can add sweat to the rosin bag, you get the same kind of grip that you do with a pine tar rack. The only problem is on a cold night or a windy night like you get a lot here, there, there's no perspiration to create that combination with. So the rosin bag, you, it might as well not even be there. Do you think they should look at adding some extra substance that everybody can use to put on the back side of the mound? We solved it. We solved it when we saw the ball from Japan. I'm telling you, and, and the hitter should be all about that because you're not you're not darkening the baseball with that Mississippi mud or whatever it is. I mean, the ball is bright white, but it's tacky enough to where you don't need anything else. That's the answer. That's a simple answer. Well, it's amazing too when you contemplate. Baseballs are rubbed up prior to the game and done differently. I mean, I, I tip my hat to Dallas for what he did there. That was outstanding. But if you watch 80% of the pitchers in the game today, you're, you're, just pay attention to them. Sure. They're going to show you where it's at. And they're, yeah, they're always fidgeting. It's routine. You think of Gaylord Perry, if you go way back, and you, you know, there's a lot of pitchers that have things they touch this, touch that, and I'm sure that's just part of, you know, hiding what they have to hide to get a grip. Hendricks turned it in a pretty good at bat. Upcoming next will be number eight of the AB. He's a good athlete. I mean, he, he he doesn't lose at anything. In spring training, the Cubs have a pool tournament where everybody shows up and play. He wins it. I mean, he can golf. He can play hoops. He, he's he's just a competitor. This at bat's already a successful at bat, no matter what happens. He's, he's raising that pitch count, and you know he keeps it going. All of a sudden, now Zimmer can't go into the seventh, and now that bullpen gets stretched. So, you know, regardless of the outcome, he keeps fouling pitches off. No, nothing's more of a nightmare for a pitcher than another pitcher fouling off as many pitches as Hendricks is doing. Jeez. I mean, how many has it been now? Ten, nine, ten. Ten pitch. Not going away quietly. So, this is fairly frustrating, yeah? Oh, my God. It's like, go away. You stink. Wow. How about that? That is a heck of an at-bat from Kyle Hendricks. And I'm telling you, him being able to handle the bat, being able to field his position, being able to run the bases from time to time will be the difference in two or three decisions over the course of a year. A guy that's normally going to be 10 and 10. If you can do the things that Kyle Hendrick, now you're 13 and 7. And a chance to be even a lot better than that. Well, here's Russell now. Zimmerman is not a guy who normally walks people. He's walked three 
in this one coming in 11 in 53 and two thirds. Yeah, but would he throw 12 pitches and that at bat? He, you know, I mean, he threw eight strikes. Well, this is what the Cubs do. Six hitters have seen six or more pitches in the bat. So, again, you're, you're talking about a control guy, but a Cub team that will grind out at bats. Yeah, I mean Zimmerman's not, you know, quite as sharp. I mean, you know, you're not seeing the consistency of location. I mean, usually he just sort of gets better as the game goes on. A little bit erratic still. Center field. Span started back now in, and he's got it. And Zimmerman gets out of it. Cubs still lead it. It's one nothing. We'll head to the fifth. If you're looking for a car that drives you and takes the wheel right from your very hands, this isn't that car. The first and only car with direct adaptive steering. The 328 horsepower Q50 from Infinity. I could have gone to Greece for the philosophy, but the food just fits so much better with my philosophy. Put it on a pizza. The Greek pizza is back. A large for $12. Add our new garlic knots for just $5 more. Better ingredients, better pizza. PapaJohns.com. Did you know that DirecTV has 99% signal reliability? But don't just take my word for it. Take it straight from my horse's mouth. You were expecting a horse, but you got a goat, and no one wants a goat. Direct TV don't give you goats, they give you reliable service. Hannah, I think we just nailed this ad. Get rid of cable and upgrade to Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Catch it in lunch. I've always done whatever it takes to get to the next level. How bad you want it? How bad you want it? You got a world talent partner off to Duke University. Come on. No pain. Parker! Bucks select Jabari Parker. Let's go. Come on. I see it. Finish. Parker has been carried to the locker room. It never gets any easier, but I will get stronger because my story is far from over. Gatorade Recover. Protein for athlete building. Well, let's take a look at our expert advice brought to you by Ace Hardware. And Cubs, not a great defensive team, but Rick here tonight have been great. Well, let's just go around the horn as far as the infield is concerned. You see Russell there. Now take a look at Bryant. Add Rizzo to the equation right there. This was huge on the part of Castro there, diving to save a run on the base hit by Span. And then look at what happened here to end the inning. The double play coming back there. Nice going, boys. When you've got a sinker ball pitcher on the mound, you have to protect him, and that's what we're seeing tonight. Neither of these teams, by the measurement of defensive runs saved, have been above average teams. In fact, they've been below average, bad defensive teams. But there's athleticism to be sure, especially on the Cubs side. And you're seeing signs of what could be. And I'm sure Theo Epstein and company hope will be. More consistent defense. Wilson Ramos, the hero yesterday, as the Nationals hit two homers and one at two one. Ramos hit one in the six. That was the difference in the game. The Nats have won 20 of 25, including that two one win yesterday. You know, there was big concern early on just because the Nationals on paper had a very weak schedule the first two months of the season. They hardly had any teams that were over 500 from a year ago. So that slow start was concerning, but now they've really caught up, picked it up, and now really blew past the New York Mets. Now towards right field and sliding. Solaire able to make the grab. Nice catch. Well, how do you build a team? One of the ways through the draft, and it all starts here. The Major League Baseball 2015 first year player draft, and the coverage begins Monday, June 8th. It's on MLB Network and MLB.com. You look at both these teams and some former first round picks. You get 
Jason Worth, who was drafted in the first round by the Orioles back 97, Span, Zimmerman, Harper, and Coglin, Russell, and Bryan for the Cubs, all, all first rounders. Well, Need the point. Go ahead. No, that's really been the, the, the biggest hole that Theo Epstein had when he took over this, this organization. There was nothing at all in that minor league system that he looked at that was going to help him. And it started right out. Al Albert Almora was the first draft that he had in 2012. He's going to be an outstanding center fielder, just 21 years of age. Then it was Chris Bryant. And wait till you see, I know you saw him in spring training. Wait till you see Kyle Schwarber, the catcher. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you get excited about Rizzo and Bryant. Just add him to the heart of the order. And, and I, I don't, I mean, Montero's doing a great job, but. Schwarber might be in the big leagues this year somewhere. Maybe in left field. Well, I, I call him Schwarber Votto 2.0. I mean, he, <laughs> he is. I got to cover him when he was in the Super Regionals NCAA tournament. And I mean, he looked like he was hitting against like three year olds. I mean, squares up everything. He's doing the same thing in double A, yeah. Doug, as, as you've seen right now. I yeah, mean, it's, they just have to you know, make sure you get a position which they'll find. I know he's catching, he's working on it, but. Cubs fans have a lot to be excited about not now but also their future because they're just they're just reloading they're coming and they're coming quickly. Here's Danny Espinosa one nothing Cubs on a Fowler leadoff homer in the first. Espinosa's a, a funny story we've seen it a couple of guys that have scrapped switch hitting with the Red Sox Victorino and as well Daniel Nava. Well Danny Espinosa went to spring training with that intent in fact didn't take and at bat left handed in the spring. This will be two. So no spring training at bats left handed. Was going to hit right on right. And since the season started, he's hit left handed against righties. Go figure. One nothing come. Every auto insurance policy has a number. But not every insurance company understands the life behind it. Those who have served our nation have earned the very best service in return. USAA, we know what it means to serve. Get an auto insurance quote and see why 92% of our members plan to stay for life. Mom, Dad, um, where do chicken fries come from? Mm. Well, when well, son, sometimes there comes a time to find a chicken. Sometimes uh, you have to defense. Uh -huh. Just never double dribble. Michael. There's just no stopping true love. Chicken fries are back at Burger King. Local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. Hey, hey, oh, hey, bro. Oh, go ahead. I want to hear this. This could get ugly. Trust me, it's all good. We got a sex tape. Oh, my God. We need more money. Bye. 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 Waited R. Advanced tickets now on sale. Welcome to X Games Austin. The NBA playoffs are on ESPN. The Western Conference Finals return to the Bay Area. It's game five Wednesday at 8 Eastern. It starts with NBA countdown, then at 9, Steph Curry and the Warriors. Try and close out James Harden and the Rockets. Steph Curry with a nasty tumble last night. A head contusion is what they said, not a concussion, a contusion. He returned, but the Rockets able to stave off elimination. And so game five tomorrow evening. Ball to strike to Dexter Fowler, who is homered and grounded out. 
John Shabby, Rick Sutcliffe, and Doug Glanville here from Wrigley Field. Best seats in baseball. I don't think there's any there's any question. Do you guys both played here? Is it still cool to come back? Oh my goodness. Well, it, it's unbelievable to, to come here like in January and just go, oh my goodness, this, 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 there's nothing here. What, what, what do they get so excited about? But you come to a ball game with weather like this. And, and you get it. I mean, you, you literally feel like you're spending the afternoon with 35,000 of your best friends. Yeah, that's a powerful place, man. Just a great an honor coming up through the system and being a Cub. Got him swinging as Zimmerman reached back. Well, let's look a little closer to Chris Bryant. Like, the coverage that he has on the plate, especially that pitch middle in. He can do a lot of damage to get it up. Bam! Gets those hands through the zone. But what is so impressive is how he can let it also get deeper when he's deep and go the other way. So that is coverage from an almost vertical standpoint. It's closer to his body. He can rifle it the other way. If he gets the head out, the bat out, he can pull it and do damage. And that's what's tough about guys that can handle that inside pitch multiple ways. He can get the hands in front and pull the ball, but then if it's behind him or closer to his body, he can go opposite field. Just foul of third. That was a pretty amazing number that we just posted how the hits are dispersed evenly left, center, and right. You know, and we were talking about left and right, how, how left handed hitters have had their way against Jordan Zimmerman. They've done it again tonight with the home run. And how he's dominated the right handed hitter that last pitch was exactly what we're talking about command of that slider to his glove side he has. But you can't throw it there to a left handed hitter they'll just drop the head of the bat on it. You have got to be able when you throw that slider and I threw a lot of it. when you try to throw it for a strike it's got to be to your arm side it's got to be away. If you throw it to the inside part of the plate you want to bounce it towards the left handed hitters back foot. I mean he owns that. But you can't throw that pitch to a left handed hitter. You'll lose it. Well, those are very good takes by Bryant, just sort of waiting for his pitch. Got him to swing and miss right there, and he kept going with that pitch that you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. He this is he he owns that right there. And you know, it's just been a big difference in this ball game. Uh, he, he has got to figure out how to throw that breaking ball. To his arm side to a left handed hitter. There's a mistake over the heart of the plate. Here's Rizzo. Look at that break. You got to get it down. That ball has to be in the dirt. Look how hard the ball is getting hit. And then with the right handed hitter, I mean, there's just a comfort zone there for him. Once he locks in on that breaking ball away to a left handed hitter, well, then it's, it's he's going to throw another no hitter. So you want him against Rizzo here to throw something that what starts out in the right side batter's box and yes. moves back in? Yes. That's okay. I mean that was that was okay. He did exactly what he wanted to do. He's trying to backdoor this breaking ball. He and Ramos are on the same page right now. Look at where he's sitting and it's a breaking ball. Now it's not quite there. It's over the heart of the plate. If that would have ball, ball would have been in a little bit more it, it would have been hit hard like the first double was. There you go. Now elevate that fastball away. Not in, don't tie him up because you know Rizzo will throw one of those big arms out there and he'll take the hit by pitch just to get on. Throw that fastball elevated away right now and watch how he responds to it. Now one of the things to consider is that the guy he's working with, he really likes throwing to Wilson Ramos. And when they are together, remember last year Ramos was a guy that was on the DL two different times, but since last year, a perfect 12 and 0 in the ERA 185 and without Ramos it hasn't gone as well. Who is your favorite to throw to. Pick well, a guy Johnny Oates was my first guy. I mean, he was a veteran catcher when I was with the Dodgers and it just told me that I'm an idiot if I try to shake him off and, and he was right. I mean Jody Jody Davis was the guy here. I mean it was 
you know, Harry Carey singing Jody in the crowd and yeah, those were those were some good times strikes out the side hey speaking of singing oh like stepping on a dog's paw that's still to come Rick Sutcliffe gonna sing take me out to the ball game Zimmerman doing a great job tonight guys it's just the two of you the setting is just right but here's the thing about half of men over 40 have some degree of erectile dysfunction well viagra helps guys with ed get and keep an erection and you only take it when you need it ask your doctor if your heart is healthy enough for sex do not take viagra if you take nitrates for chest pain it may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure Side effects include headache, flushing, upset stomach, and abnormal vision. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. Stop taking Viagra and call your doctor right away if you experience a sudden decrease or loss in vision or hearing. Ask your doctor about Viagra. Excuse me, do you have the keys for the razor case? No. It's kind of like they don't want you to buy razors. DollarShaveClub.com delivers amazing razors for just a few bucks. Every day of the week can be delicious. New Parmesan crusted chicken arugula delicious. Fresh, crispy, zesty. A full meal for just $12.99 for a limited time. Three new entrees, $12.99 each, makes every day delicious. Hurry to Carabas tonight or any night. Memorial Day savings are still going on at Lowe's, so hurry in for these great savings, like $10 off all paint and primer and stain and sealant in one via online or mail-in rebate, plus five bags of premium mulch for $10. So hurry into Lowe's now for big summer savings. Only Dove Men Plus Care Antiperspirant has 48 hour sweat protection plus one quarter moisturizer technology. It keeps your underarms dry without irritation. Tough on sweat, not on skin. I think Paracet's OTC each quarter for my frequent heartburn. Does it get me? Zero heartburn. Prilosec OTC, the number one doctor recommended frequent heartburn medicine for nine wow. straight years. One pill each morning, 24 hours, zero heartburn. They'll watch every out-of-market game live in HD on over 400 devices. MLB.TV Premium, it's the number one live streaming and sports service. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, and a lot more. It's MLB.TV. Jordan Zimmerman put down a sacrifice bunt his first time. Only run in this game, a Dexter Fowler leadoff homer. In yeah, the bottom of the first. Bryant takes his time. And with one down, back to the studio and Adnan Verk. Boog, you can just refer to me and Dallas as Silk and Mondo the rest of the night. This is the Mets and the Phillies. Mets two and a back in the Nationals. Look, it's Duda RBI single. Yeah, Duda started off extremely hot, sort of fizzled out a little bit, starting to get it going again. Good to see. Michael Kadire, two run single as well. Currently, it's all Mets. Three nothing, the top of the seventh. Boog, set back to you guys. I don't know whether he's Silk or Mondo, so I wouldn't oh, he's sure how to say he's Silk. Adnan is definitely Silk. <laughs> Here's Denard Span shortens the bunt, takes a strike. You know, you talked about Dexter Fowler hitting that home run to lead off the ball game. It was Denard Span who did the exact same thing yesterday in that two to one victory for the Washington Nationals. First ball hit off that scoreboard in that right field corner. Yeah, there's the one. He got it off of there as they continue to work on those bleachers. They literally work on the bleachers right up until first pitch. Most days. Yeah, it's impressive. I mean, the net, you got to put that net up. <laughs> otherwise, it's target practice. So they're really careful, making sure they're watching. Bryant has room. Now there's two away. We know that Cal Hendricks had nine <laughs> shutout innings last time he took the mound. He's one out away from throwing up six zeros here against the Washington Nationals. 
you know a lot of people were really upset here with the Cub fan when Theo Epstein traded Ryan Dempster. <laughs> I mean Theo had to take a lot of heat for a couple of years. What are you doing. He's our best pitcher. He's the only one that has a chance to win. Well we collectively don't have a chance to win but we're going to somewhere down the line. It was Kyle Hendricks one of the guys that came over from Texas in that trade. Yeah, it's been what five straight losing seasons. Haven't been to the playoffs since 2008. This by the way his first 2 0 count of the night. And it turns into a base hit. Into right center field maybe more. There's Desmond. Challenging Solaire and he gets in with a double. That's just the second guy into scoring position for the Nationals here tonight. You know he's at his best when he's able to keep the ball on the ground and that ball just look at look at how far it goes from left to right. It really didn't have a whole lot of tilt to it as the ones earlier tonight have that could be a huge concern right now when you think about pitching coach Chris Basio he knows what it takes for Kyle Hendricks to be successful and he knows when he's starting to run into problems. Was that a mistake is that just one pitch that got away from him or. Is fatigue starting to set in here? He threw a career high in pitches the last time out. He's at 71 here tonight. And make it 72. Yeah, 108 in that complete game five hitter. As he deals with Escobar. And he'll get out of it in advance of Bryce Harper. It leaves him right there in the on deck circle. It stays a one run game here at Wrigley Field. Rockets, Warriors, tomorrow at 9 on ESPN. Before I pitch, I hit Subway for my go to. Fresh made turkey and cheese on nine grain wheat, followed by a steady diet of fastballs. Able to get away. Life should always feel like this. Hampton, we go together. Always get the lowest price only when you book direct at Hampton.com. Who says desirable can't also be responsible? With 46 standard safety features, the Lexus RX is proof that fun can be good for you. This is the pursuit of perfection. The Fantasy Sports Hall of Fame presents former accountant Derek Bradley. DraftKings One Day Fantasy Baseball took him from a guy with holes in his underpants to a guy with bikini models in them. How do they do it? DraftKings.com. They have one day games, so you're not locked in. It's like a new season every time you play. And best of all, you could win a boatload of money. Play with DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of MLB. Play with promo code HIT and get free entry in our daily contest. Get to DraftKings.com. Before I pitch, I hit Subway for my go-to. Fresh made turkey and cheese on nine grain wheat, followed by a steady diet of fastballs. Fans, follow your favorite team and players all season long with the MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball at bat is up to the moment at any moment. In-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, and much more. Get MLB.com at bat and get it now. And right now, it's Starlin Castro, and right now he's got a single. Something I learned a couple of years ago, and it's actually mounted and framed in Joe Madden's office, is something that he calls the five stages of being a major league baseball player. And I, I have to agree with all of this. The first thing you think of, I'm happy to be here. This is awesome. Then all of a sudden, man, I want to stick around. I want to stay here. Then all of a sudden, you start going, wait a minute. I can actually do this. I belong here. 
Then you come down to the point. I want to take care of my family. I want to make as much money as I can. Once Joe Madden gets rid of those four things, then he's got the finished product that he wants. And when you're talking about a guy like Montero, he's been around a while. He's a two-time All-Star. He's made a lot of money. Knows he belongs here. That's why Joe Madden wanted to make this deal because all he wants to do now is win. Montero a walk and a single got him from the Diamondbacks in December. You know when you look at the makeup of this club, I mean there's a lot of guys that are right there at the beginning. You know you got Soler in the on deck circle. I, I'm sure he's happy to be here. I don't know if he's gotten to the point where he feels like he belongs. Mm -hmm. There's, there's you, you, Dougie, you know it well, man. You, 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 you got to get through those phases, and you can't fake it. Well, he he weeds you out if if, you, if you're trying to. It's about complacency, avoiding being complacent at any of those stages until you get the success. You keep after it, and even then, you kind of run through the finish line. So every stage along the way, you could have a built-in excuse to stop really getting better. And Joe Madden does a great job of avoiding that and preventing that from happening. I turn him loose right now. I turn him loose. I clip the corner. K zone had it as a strike. He kind of looked hitterish there, didn't he? Like he, he might have had the green light, but didn't want to chase what he thought was a fastball up. It's a good time to put him in motion here. Three one. Make it, I, make I, don't, it I don't like that Dougie. I, I don't like sending him on a 3 1 count. I, I, I just. The first. Yeah. Should have sent him set. Well there's no doubt about <laughs> it now. I, I mean you want to stay on that double play. But for me what happens when you've got nobody out in the man on first when you send him on a 3 1 count Dougie for a hitter on, on anything close you feel like you have to protect. I, he. he that, that, that second strike's not going to hurt you. If that's not a pitch, I mean, you got to be disappointed there in Montero for swinging at that pitch. I, I like to, I don't want to put that pressure on him on a borderline strike as the 3 0 pitch was, where he feels I got to protect. I got to protect the runner. I, I don't think 3 1's the, the position for that. But once again, the Ivy League guy was. <laughs> Doug, yeah, I think you send him there, though. He's still, that's still a double play, probably. Yeah, it may well be. I mean, part of it is, like you said, it's a mentality of the runner, though. If it's a steal and hit, we're not talking hit and run. Right. Then, you know, you have a guy who's capable of stealing a bag like Castro. That's a different approach. But certainly, you don't want to make a hitter defensive. Third base now, and it's Escobar. Solaire retired. Nationals down the run. Bryce Harper going to see if he can tie it with one swing. Meet Mary. She loves to shop online with her debit card. And so does Bill, an identity thief who stole Mary's identity and took her hard-earned money. LifeLock's proactive identity theft protection helps guard your social security number, your money, and your credit. Call now and get 60 days of LifeLock Identity Theft Protection risk-free. Use promo code ACTNOW and get this document shredder free. Call 1-800-LIFELOCK. That's 1-800-LIFELOCK. Hi, can you open the razor case, please? Photo ID. I'm just grabbing some razors. Grabbing? It's almost like they don't want you to buy their razors. DollarShaveClub.com delivers amazing razors for just a few bucks. Mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's at 58 years old. This disease just ravages a family. It changes your life. If we work together, we can stop this epidemic. Now is the moment. Contact Bright Focus and learn more. If I can go back to, to any time period in my life, I think it would be whenever I was a little kid. Having no responsibility, just being a kid. If I can make kids happy, that's what I'm trying to do. It's a sweet mask. Go Tigers! Give a little time for the child within you. Don't be afraid to be young and free. It's not home, but with every well-considered detail, it becomes one step closer. 
Crispy chicken loaded with pickles. Pickles. You know who totally loved that? Peter. Peter Conrad? No, Piper from Payroll. Pack a pack of papers, please. Pam, prepare the parallel path presentation of Patrick's perusal. Pickle people pick Wendy's new crispy dill chicken. Just a buck forty-nine. So here's Hyper now with the Nationals down one to nothing. He's gotten rid of the the other batting glove. So we go no batting gloves for this third at bat. He's 0 for 2. Things have changed for this guy. He's gotten more patient. And look at the way the numbers have changed. And amazing he already has more homers than last year remember he dealt with that thumb injury last year he came into the season coming off of knee surgery I, I saw him take an early batting practice today and he just had the cut off t shirt on <laughs> and we all talk about and I remember Jake Peavy when all of a sudden he showed up one spring with what you call man muscles right I mean he's he's become a man now. And look at the way he's approaching this. He lays off tough pitches. And that 2 0, he was swinging, but he said, no, you know, that's not the one I want. He's not just up there free swinging. He's got a plan, and he's able to lay off pitches he doesn't like. Gets under this one, deep to left, way back there, and that one is gone. Wow! He threw his back down like it was an out, and he's homered to tie this thing at one apiece. Goodness. That's Wrigley Field, gentlemen. <laughs> Never know. I spent seven and a half years watching this exact same thing. When those flags are blowing out and you miss your location, you elevate a pitch. Even though you think you made a good pitch, and you see how frustrated the hitter gets. I, I, I'm telling you, I was here one time when Sean Dunstan, our shortstop, called for a ball that ended up in the basket. <laughs> he goes, I got it, I got it. Gone. Castro able to steady and throw him out. Well, look, yeah, just look at the flags. That tells you a lot. But this is clear disgust. I mean, you hit it, Harper's like, ah, you know what? Really? Not happy. And then check the reaction. Watch what he says as he crosses home plate. <laughs> wow. Pop up the third. Home run. I think he just decided he wants to play for the Cubs at some point before his <laughs> career is over with. They get the wind at 17 miles an hour. I mean, look at this. I mean, that's that's serious. And you, you know, you have to get it up in the, in the elevation. Once you get up there, the wind will take care of the rest. All right, buddy. Um, that moment that I know you've been waiting for. A lot, very much. Uh, my partner will be leaving oh. because he's got to go sing. <laughs> <laughs> and what was that sound you said that it that it reminded?